Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how do I service an ETA 7750 movement. This is a watch which is given to me by my friend. It's a ball chronograph. I believe he has been using this movement for 20 years or so. I stripped the movement and I figured out that the watch is lacking duplication and it's not been serviced for a while. So it's time for me to get this watch back in action. I will not be able to show all the lubrication which I'm doing in this watch and I will try my best. If you are going to service an ETA, ETA 7750 movement, I highly recommend you guys to download the ETA 7750 manual. That gives you guys an extensive chart on where to lubricate and what um, oil you need to use. Um, let's get started. I'm using my little giant watch cleaning machine. I'm using a special liquid to clean the watch parts and this is the first rinse. After running this for 15 minutes, I'm just draining the excess liquid in this. And this is my second rinse. I do that for another 15 minutes twice in two different liquids. Here is the watch movement stripped and clean and it is ready for reassembly. New mainspring for the movement. Let's start by putting together the mainspring. I have the barrel, the barrel arbor and the lid and the mainspring. Now I applied the Mobius 8030 degrees in the barrel. Now I'm applying the D5 for the arbor and now we can close the a barrel lid with a special tool without any finger marks. Now we can start assembling the movement. I'm starting with D5 in the hacks. I'm assembling the hack now. And this is what stops the balance when you pull the crown on the third click. Now we will go ahead and install the escape on wheel, the second wheel, the third wheel, and the great wheel. Putting back the main plate aligning with the p-tool. Before tightening that, I want to make sure that all the wheels are aligned. Now we can start putting the screws. It is secured by three screws. Installing the crown wheel, I'm applying D5. Now I'm putting the crown wheel and applying D5 again. And this is where the crown nose rides. Install the crown nose and tightening with the screws. Now we can assemble the ratchet wheel and the ratchet wheel screw. Now I am oiling the wheels with D5 and 9010. Assembling the keyless box and I have assembled the sliding pinion, now the winding pinion, lubricating the stem with 9501, inserting the stem, applying D5 in the great wheel. And this is the wheel which takes the cannon pinion. Applying some D5. Now we can install the cannon pinion. And this is the wheel which drives the entire time unit and also allows us to set the time in the second position in the crown. Lubricating with 9501, and this is where the rocking bar gets into contact, installing the rocking bar. Now installing the setting lever, lubricated with D5. Now we can install the yoke. Installing the setting lever jumper and the intermediate wheel. And this completes the keyless work. And I am lubricating the setting lever jumper and testing out the keyless works with all the three positions and everything looks great. Cleaning up with some Rodico just to remove some excess oil. Installing the pallet fork, nice and shining. Now I'm installing the pallet bridge, aligning with my P-tool to make sure that pallet fork aligns with my pallet fork bridge pivot. Checking. Now I'm installing the pallet bridge screws. Before tightening, I'm making sure that everything is lined up. If it doesn't line up and if you tighten the screw, then most likely you'll be breaking the pallet pivot. Applying some 9010 in the pallet fork, cleaning up with Rodico and installing the balance wheel to see if the watch has any heartbeat. And yes, it does. Now we can start putting the balance screw. Removing the in-car block jewel 
and this will be cleaned with a special liquid called Zippo. I'm giving the ultrasonic effect to clean the jewel and the jewel cap. Now applying 9010. Now we can close the jewel cap with the jewel and it installed in the balance and closing the incubator shock springs. Now we can cleaning up with the Rodico. Turning the movement back and removing the other jewel on the jewel cap, cleaning in the same way using the zipper liquid. Doing some ultrasonic effect here by just using some blower. And this one cleans pretty well. Now I'm using my automatic oiler to oil the jewels with 9010. Now the jewel and jewel caps are ready to put it back into the movement and I'm just tightening the spring. This completes the base movement assembly. Now we can start working on the chronograph module. I'm lubricating the chronograph cam with grease and this is the cam gets activated when you when we use the chronograph function. Lubricating with D5 and installing the cam and securing that with the cam screw. Installing the cam hammer and aligning with the cam. Installing the operating spring. The hover wheel, which should not be lubricated. Now the operating lever, which is lubricated with D5. Secured with the operating lever screw. Installing the lock, it's a double lock. Securing that with the screw and installing the lock underneath the operating lever with some lubrication of D5. Installing the cannon, sorry, the chronograph uh, friction pinion. Installing the ratchet wheel, aligning with the Barrel. This is what winds when we when the rotor rotates. Installing the chronograph bridge. Reducing wheel. Oscillating pinion. This is what runs the chronograph. Now the chronograph wheel lubricated with 9010. Turning on the chronograph. Lining that with last lighting pinion. Installing the minute counter, aligning with the spring. Installing the clutch and the hammer, and now the reversing gear and the reversing bridge. Lining up the pivots, the pip the P tool, and now this will be secured with three screws. Just lubricating the chronograph wheel with 9010. Now I'm installing the hammer and lubricating that with some grease. I'm applying some grease here where the hammer and the hammer spring engages. Now we can start working on the date on the calendar module. Lubricating with D5, installing the free cannon pinion. Lubricating with D5, Installing the minute wheel, then the hover wheel, in 
intermediate calendar wheel the day star driving wheel that needs to be aligned to the mark which you see there it needs to be marked exactly to that otherwise your date will not change correctly at 12 a 12 p.m sorry 12 a.m now the day star driving wheel which needs to be aligned to the pivot to exactly just opposite to the date wheel so it should be in this setup if this is not aligned like this the date and day will not change at 12 a.m now installing the hour counting wheel hour hammer and the operating lever and lubricated with grease now installing the operating hour counter lock now the hour hammer spring now we can install the date platform which is secured with three screws lubricating with D5 for the dual corrector I'm installing the dual corrector now again lubricating that with D5 for the peak changer now installing the date ring installing the date jumper under the date jumper lubricated with D5 now installing the spring install the plates and the plate screws these plates make sure that it doesn't come the wheel doesn't come out and just removing excess oil using Rodico now I'm testing out by pulling the stem and checking whether the wheel is working it's working as expected I'm lubricating the date lever with some D5 now installing the day wheel and it just locks with the friction and the washer for the day wheel now we can ready to assemble the watch again and i put back the dial i'm checking the date and the dial transition and it looks good now we can install the second hand now i am changing the time so that i am at the 12 o'clock position now we can install the hour hand minute hand removing cleaning up with Rodico starting the minute counter Now the hour counter. I'm installing the chronograph hand. Lining up at 12 o'clock position along with the minute hand and then cleaning up with some radical. Now we can test the watch by using the chronograph function. works beautifully for putting to back the moment into the case I will clean it with Rodico beautiful and this is how the minute hand transition for every minute
நம்ம ரீசெட் எங்கே செக்கிங் எவ்ரி திங் லுக்ஸ் குட் கிளீனிங் அப் த டால் வித் சம் ரொடிகோ இன்ஸ்டாலிங் த கேஸ் இன்ஸ்டாலிங் த ஸ்டாம்ப் and the movement ring which keeps the movement intact with the case and this will be secured with screws and a plate two plates one on either side so i'm installing the screw and on the other side i'm installing the plate aligning it to the plate and installing the screws Now we can install the rotor, which is secured with a rotor screw, lubricated with 90-10, very little. This completes the service of this movement, and I'm very happy with the way it turned out. If you like my video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Thank you.